there's over a hundred million people whose lives are being radically, negatively, you know, uh, impacted by reading related things in this country alone. Mm -hmm. So that's the space we're getting to. Right. It, it, but in order to get there, right. in order for people to understand that in a different way, we need to demystify and in some ways uh, bring up about a richer myth about this whole process right. of right. becoming written literate, right. which is brand new in the you know the evolutionary unfoldment indeed and has had an enormously radical effect I mean, we can't look around and, and and unless we're pretty deep in nature and not see something that's mm -hmm. an expression of the effect of thinking through the system through the system and certainly everything we these days call western culture or western civilization seems more precisely um, named alphabetized civilization or alphabetic civilization yeah so I, you know i've read so many wonderful uh, studies on its influence upon how we think um and i'm curious you know i've been particularly interested in how does it affect how we perceive the world when we're not reading and how does it affect our experience of language and linguistic meaning once we have become literate alphabetically literate um, and so i'm coming as a cultural ecologist and philosopher you know and noticing these things that yeah it would be wonderful to 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 unpack it at more depth because it's very obvious to me for instance and it's amazing that this has not been brought out or i haven't seen it in other people working on the alphabet that only when the alphabet comes into a culture, when, a, when, when the phonetic alphabet arrives, only then does that culture get this odd notion that language is an exclusively human property or possession, and the rest of the land falls mute. You don't experience this in that way uh, among you know, Eastern cultures working with more ideographic or somewhat iconic scripts, certainly not among the Mayan, or obviously not among the Egyptians. But um, one writing system, um, very, very powerfully, you know, not only impacts our experience of our own subjectivity, but so profoundly impacts our experience of the, of, of the sensuous surroundings. So much so that I, you know, I, I would have to say that the alphabet has played a very crucial role in the deepening environmental crisis, ecological crisis that now besets us on, on every hand. The crisis for me has been from the get-go a crisis out here. It's not in the world, nor is it in us. It's in the relation between the two. And the alphabet, like any writing system, is a relationship between the human organism and something external to it in the surrounding sensory world. In this case, it's the, it's the written marks on the page. And the way in which those marks, the way in which the letters, the written characters, interrupt the spontaneous sensory reciprocity between the human organism and the organic world, the, the spontaneous... Um, solidarity and participation between the human senses and and the rest of the of the sensuous the whole of the sensuous surroundings in a sense the letters uh, usurp that participation and they 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 break that circuit that circuit they short circuit this old reciprocity that any oral culture and the participants in any oral culture are experiencing in relation to the, the animate earth that surrounds them. Um, and once that's broken, then the rest of nature begins to be felt as, um, uh, it's, not, it's not being felt and nearly as richly, nearly as poignantly. Um, it begins to seem like uh, just a kind of inert or passive backdrop against which human unfoldings happen. But it's not a player in those unfoldings. 
Whereas for every oral, oral culture, it's a major player. And the various other animals, the plants, the winds, are major players in human unfoldings. And I think we could still um, make the case that they really are, that the, that the surrounding natural landscape, whichever bioregion we happen to inhabit, um, is deeply affecting the human goings-on there. But we take it entirely for granted. We can't see it. We, can't f we don't notice it. It's just passive stuff, a bunch of objects, or worse, just a set of resources for us to manipulate and use for our own purposes. Hence, the environmental crisis, a, a crisis of perception, an inability to see outside the frame of a purely human, that'd be just the wind. The inability to see anything outside the frame of an exclusively human discourse, uh, an exclusively human conversation, because meaning, once the alphabet arrives, gets encapsulated within an exclusively human sphere. It's something that we carry, and we, we speak of it as being inside ourselves, and we trade it around among one another, you know, between ourselves. That is the, um, the foundation of a tremendous crisis in uh, when, when, the, when the surrounding landscape, when the earth underfoot and the air that envelops us and the water we drink is not seen as having its own meaning. We're the ones who give meaning to the world. The rest of the world is just, it's basically inanimate. Or at best, determinate, a set of entirely mechanical processes. So uh, that was just responding to, um, to why I don't see it entirely as a reflection of something going on in here. It's a whole breakdown of relationship that has happened between us and the world because we've entered into this new relationship with the page. It says that the, the alphabet and alphabetic literacy does not cause our human estrangement from the more than human natural surroundings, but it makes it possible in a way that it simply is not possible for um, traditionally oral indigenous peoples who are so deeply embedded in the particular landscapes that they inhabit and they are practicing relationship all the time with the various other organisms, the other animals, the plants, but also with the winds and the weather powers. Um, they have to, just for strictly practical purposes, in order to make their living, they have to apprentice themselves to the other animals in order to get close enough to another animal in order to bag it for dinner. Um, so they're in a very deep uh, reciprocal relationship with the land, and the land itself is experienced as something expressive, as something that, that is active, is animate, is alive. And um, writing, and particularly alphabet, alphabetic writing, makes possible a forgetting of that larger field of active agencies. It makes it possible that, that a literate person gets caught up in a conversation strictly with other people and with books and with his own things that he or she has written last week and reading those things over and gradually um, situating herself entirely in a space of um, of meanings that are exclusively human, and nature can fall away. Um, but that, in order to, you know, the, that last little little piece that I that I said actually doesn't make a lot of sense without first speaking in a little more depth about oral oral cultures and the way language and linguistic meaning is carried uh, within oral cultures. 